Hello, 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 and welcome to The Cup TV, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality, and where you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I am your girl, Lana, your resident evil diva, and I'm here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea, because you know I love me some tea, beer. Um, I don't have anything to drink, because... I didn't grab anything, but that's fine. Um, I, I'm so excited to talk about to the talk to the person of the hour. I'm just gonna cut my intro short and just pass it on over to David because yes. we got time for all this. We, we, we're not here to see us. We're here to see. Yes. Well, we I'm <laughs> I'm David Healy, the Survivor Super Fan of the podcast and Trader Super Fan too. I think, um, <laughs> but I am drinking some water, and I do have my cup mug. Um, oh, I have mine too. I should have said that too. Cut <laughs> yes. But we're so happy to have Sandra here. Yay. Hi, Sandra. Well, I have my Survivor cup here with water in it. Um, yeah. David got a hold of me earlier today. We've been friends for years. For mm-hmm. those that didn't believe he knows the survivors, he does. I, do. and, um, I said, David, I got 30 minutes. I'm in the midst of packing, I'm leaving in the morning. Um, me, Janelle, CT, and Peter were fortunate enough to get an invite to do a small segment for um, the Oscars. So I'm getting glammed up. They're doing my hair. They're doing my hair. They're giving me an outfit. I hope I can walk in whatever shoes they put me in. Um, but yeah, I said, I have a couple of minutes. Let's do it. Word. I mean, if anybody go get, deserves to get glammed up and go to the Oscars, it is the queen of Survivor, two-time winner, Miss Sandra <laughs> Diaz Twine, period. And probably should have won traitors if people wouldn't be in people. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, we had a lot of upset people. But uh, to start off, um, I-, I think my error came in episode nine when I saw that CT was not happy about hearing me tell Phaedra to shoot down Trishel. He didn't hear everything I said. He just heard the name Trishel and it actually would have benefited him because we wanted him to get the shoot because he was part of the leftovers. So we didn't want John or Trishel to get it. And in hindsight, I guess I threw out the window their relationship of 20 years just temporarily had a a, a brain fart mm-hmm. where I forgot like these two go way back and no matter what that's gonna matter mm-hmm. um but when I saw that on episode nine where he goes back to the castle and he's having issues with it like internal issues he's doubting me he's telling Trishel you know I heard Sandra I think it's Phaedra and Sandra that's when I said, that's when I finally slipped up as a faithful because I'm a faithful. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to slip up, but still I showed signs of traitor behavior mm. and that's where it all starts. And then Kate, even before she got picked as a traitor, I found out from Sheree that she was throwing my name around in the cabin in the woods, but Phaedra hadn't picked her yet. Poverty was still on that mission. So she was like, do you think it's Sandra? You know, she's a survivor, just like Sari, blah, blah. So I knew at that point that uh, Kate started like watching me. But once she was a traitor, it was a whole different story because now she knows for sure that I'm just a faithful. Mm -hmm. But she was smart in starting to get the wheels turning and having people like MJ had never to my face, at least showed signs of distrust like Sandra you're active fishy, you're saying something weird, like never happened. I always 1000% knew Trishel was a faithful. I knew MJ was a faithful. There was no doubt in my head. And so to see MJ start to turn on me, it really hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. You touched on a few things that um, I'm kind of curious about. So um, I I was thinking watching this season that people who came from the CBS reality family had to play a different game. And that was specifically because Sari won season one. Do you think you all had an uphill battle or do you, did you have an advantage in the game? We had an uphill battle only because of that reason. Oh, you guys are from Survivor. Oh, Sari won last season. Oh, you guys are from Big Brother. So it became like the gamers against the housewives like maybe day two, you know, it started to look like that. Um, 
But I would ask the housewives, like, have you watched Survivor? And they'd be like, no. And then they're saying, you know, well, Dan is a two-time winner. Well, I never corrected them. I was the only two-time winner in that castle, but I'm not going to say nothing, you know? So it's funny how on last night's episode, MJ is telling Kate, Sandra's a two-time winner. And Kate's like, really? Because they thought it was Dan. And I never said anything contrary, you know? I just said, do you watch Survivor? They all said, no. I said, it's easy. We go on an island, pretend like you your plane has just crashed and you, you have to make do with what's out there. <clears throat> and we're two tried. We compete, like, let's say it's a tug of war. Whoever wins doesn't have to vote anyone out. Whoever loses does. And that's where the problems happen because you've been happy ever since, happily ever after, and now someone's got to go home. I was like, they were like, oh, yeah, but I heard it's backstabbing, uh, lying, cheating. And I'm like, no, it's just somebody's got to go home, just like here. We do a mission. We go to banishment. Somebody has to go home. So I kind of like tried to play it down. Mm. But it was six of them. It was six housewives, you know? I mean, well, not six housewives, but just the Bravo oh, family. Mm -hmm. Seven Kate when she walked through the door. Um, where it was just a handful of us, um, but we kind of stuck together out of necessity, but I still wanted to be friends with everyone, faithful or traitor. Now, I do have a quick question, though, because you said at the reunion that we, you wanted to be the traitor, which we saw in the episodes that you wanted to be a traitor. I thought you would have been a phenomenal traitor, honestly. I was Thank like, you. make Sandra be a traitor. That will be great. But, like, you wanted Parvati and Phaedra to recruit you when they went for Peter, which I thought was good. And Parvati was like, no, Sandra would probably, you would turn on me right away. Do you think you would have worked with Parvati and Phaedra throughout the game and tried to make the traitors win? Or would you have, like, maybe got as far as you can if the Heat needed to be there and then take, took her out or took them out? I think because they both had heat on them. Okay, so Parvati had heat on her before she was even a traitor. Yeah, so I don't have to go after poverty because only four people can get to the end. So we already know 18 people have to go home. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly believe that I would have allowed it to happen if the numbers were there. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't actively have sought out to get her banished because then somebody else has to come into the picture. Like I did my homework before going out there. Like I watched any season that was available and it was like New Zealand, Australia, the UK, the U S. So I watched. And um, as far as Phaedra's concerned, she wasn't on anyone's radar until Dan spoke. And he said, when I give up a name, that's who you guys need to look at. Like there was no, I might be wrong. It's a little iffy. No, when I give you a name and then him being a traitor, we were like, okay, so now we know, but guess what? Phaedra is my friend, but I wish they would have picked me. I wish they would have picked me. Um, a lot of things would have went differently. Like Trishel, her days would have been numbered. She wouldn't have got to the end. I said, Phaedra, how many times did she throw you under the bus at the round table and you kept giving her chances? You should have took her out. You know, she shouldn't have been there. Um, but congratulations to her. Nonetheless, I love Trishel. She's a sweetheart. She really looked out for me at the end. I didn't expect that from her. Um, but Kate set me up and it worked. And I got banished because she put in work. She did put in work. So we can't take that away from Kate. Mm hmm. Well, speaking of Trishel, um, so I just listened to an interview with Trishel on Johnny Banana's podcast. Uh, you probably haven't had a time time to hear that yet, uh, but both of them were talking about. Okay, so it's very clear now. Uh, Trishel and CT were the final two. We know which reality show is the best. We know which one has the best players. These so-called legends aren't as legendary as they thought they were. What do you have to say to that? And why are they extremely wrong? Um, you know what? They're just riding this happy train. Um, we're going to let them listen. Traders was not easy. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'm a legend in survivor. I know that I want like survivors hard. No bullshit. I've spent days out there starving and everything else. Um, I know I'm a legend. And, um, and even the bananas told me at the reunion, he was like, man, Sandra, because I got a lot of questions at the reunion. They didn't show them. We were there for hours. 
I got more questions than CT and Trishel, and they won the show. So I was shocked that I was answering so many fan questions about uh, just the game in general and my strategy and, you know, the pool table and blah, blah, blah. So I know I'm a legend. Um, I they, They're good at their shows. I really don't want – I mean, I started now watching the challenge when Survivors started playing just to show uh, some love to the Survivors. Right. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't watched them before. So I'm sure – listen, Bananas is a legend. Um, he wasn't this season. No, <laughs> but he was a legend. Um, and I'm watching House of Villains now. I'm actually catching up. It's good. Uh, and Trishel finally got her first victory, but that don't make her legendary. Like I've been there. Mm. 2003. Period. You know? But I'm not gonna hate. Listen, I really I like Bananas and Trishel. They're just doing it for the fans because their fans want to hear that. Just like my fans want to hear me say how awesome I am. So let's let them have it. I mean, I agree. And I think on their show, on each perspective shows, like everybody is le like, you are a legend and survivor. I feel like Tr uh, CT and Johnny are legends on the challenge. Trishelle too, as well. And I feel like Dan and Janelle are legends in Big Brother. It is what it is. And the housewives, they are just um, like, legends, yeah. they're legends in their shows. I think everybody are in their own perspective places are legends, but when it came to traders and you have so many different personalities and so many different people coming together, it was kind of interesting how the people who we felt like were, oh, these people, they go eat this one up. They go eat this down. They go go in this game and tear it up, and then they don't do it, and you're like, oh, so this game is just totally different from what they were used to. It is, it is. And sometimes you have to sit back and allow others to just like, you have to just sit back and let whatever happens, happens. Like you can't be very vocal to a certain extent. Um, Trisha was very vocal. Look how far it got her. Mm -hmm. um, so congratulations to her. But, but yeah, like a lot of my fans were like, oh my God, Sandra, no. Um, I think had I won, it would have been a different reaction mm -hmm. across the spectrum, but being that Trishel won, it doesn't look like there's a lot of happy people or even CT in the way, you know, MJ was, whether they thought MJ was a traitor or not at the end of, they just wanted to split it two ways. It's a thousand ways we can just dissect that. Um, but I'm happy for Trishel and CT. CT put a lot of money in that money pot. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because it was like seven women and one man. And, and that's why, I'm, look, there were times uh, Trishel told me at least three that I could remember where she said, I think CT's a traitor. I think CT's a traitor, but don't tell nobody this. So when she wrote down CT's name um, in front of the fire of, what is that fire? Fire of truth. Yeah, the fire of truth, because we have the circle of truth. Um, in front of the, I didn't know they gave it that name. Um, she really thought CT was a traitor. Mm -hmm. She really thought CT was a traitor. So, but he supposedly said a couple of things like, we got this, let's take this home, let's win this one, and took MJ out. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you, you you mentioned the reunion. I want to, I know, David, you're about to jump in, but I want to jump in real quick because you mentioned the reunion and how you got a lot of questions. And I noticed that you got more questions, and a lot of other people got more questions than the actual winners of the show. But that's because a lot of y'all were just more entertaining. But um, do you feel like some of the um people were bitter at the in, at the reunion, or were their feelings justified? Like MJ came off as to me, I felt like her feelings were very much justified, but she was a little upset. But I, I think what Andy said at the end kind of made sense. The cultures of which each player came from, like the comp the gamers. Y'all used to this. Y'all used to being voted out. You're used to being betrayed and backstabbed. And so it's kind of like, it's the game, whatever. It is what it is. But the housewives and the other Bravo celebrities, they don't do that. That's not what they do. Peter, that's not what he does. It's just like, they come in and they're like, we, I trust this person. I put all my trust in this person. And then they backstab me. Now I feel like this is a personal thing. Yeah. So MJ was justified because she made it all the way to the end with what she believed were faithfuls and she wanted to share the money. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the deal. She made her bed. Now she's got to lay in it because when we went up to that last mission, it was MJ, 
Trishel and me in a car, and we had decided that we were going to vote out Kate, mm -hmm. and we were still t debating about CT. You know what I'm saying? But because her and Kate are good friends, not to mention this is a smoking alliance. Kate, Trishel, MJ, and CT were always the smokers, mm -hmm. and we didn't watch them. We should have watched them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the fact that she decided to go with Kate to get rid of me, and then Kate goes home, like, I didn't care that MJ went home because she had just did that to me 15 minutes ago. 15 minutes ago, we were in that round table. And when I walked out the door, they walked outside. It had just happened to me. So really, I don't have any sympathy because <laughs> it had just happened to me. And yeah, I've been voted out more than I've won. So I'm we're, the gamers are used to it. We move on and we go to the next thing. Um but I had her back since day one. There was early in the season, they were after MJ. And I was like, MJ, don't worry about it. We know that you're a faithful. We're not going to vote against you at the round table. You're not going to go home. She could have easily have been gone early in the game and she didn't. So guess what? It is what it is. I love MJ. We talk. Um, but yeah, I wasn't like, like I said, I didn't have any sympathy. I didn't feel bad because that had just happened to me. And I was a faithful. So although they might say, oh, but we thought, we thought, well, I never thought you were a traitor. I never thought Trisha was a traitor. I never thought CT. Well, for a brief second, there were a couple of times where I was like, okay, maybe he could be, all the guys are gone. Could CT have been the one to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And let me say this other thing. And the only reason why I say that is because at the beginning of the game, and I've been saying it, so I'm sure you guys have heard it before. We thought because customary, you grab three traitors. So we thought Allen might have picked three, and then we knew there was a recruitment. So we thought there were four in the house. So Dan went home, Parvati went home, now Phaedra's been gone. We're still looking for that last one. So I could see why CT would think it was me because I'm hanging around Phaedra. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm playing, me and Phaedra were playing checkers on a chessboard. Um, we were just hanging out. There was no game talk. Mm hmm. Uh, well, you touched on a moment um, earlier about the pool table scene, um, and I think that's where every Survivor fan was like, yes, that's our girl, that's Sandra. So we had the five Peter Pals versus the seven uh, leftovers. Um, do you think it was a mistake for the traitors to then murder Bergy, um, which took away a number from the Peter Pals, and it freed you all up to banish within? Oh, no, that's exactly what we did. Once Bergy was gone, then it was okay for us to still banish within because we still had them two to one. So it was okay. Um, Bergy was on borrowed time, you know, so it was okay to take out Bergy. Um, and then, you know, Parvati had so much heat on her that it was time to get another trader out. And we just wanted to see if she really is a trader, like we all believe, then that's one lace less person and by then every chance like every, anytime anybody got banished i was like oh i hope they recruit me mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but we were you know, we were the same way and we we're like please recruit her yeah phaedra told me after the fact that you know she had thought about it but she had been burned by mm -hmm. Dan poverty and she didn't know what i was gonna do you know versus kate but kate and her i feel like and they haven't said anything but I've been saying in all my interviews, when Kate told uh, Phaedra, you are a selfish player, she also told her, you're going to learn today. And mm -hmm. that was something that Phaedra had told someone at the round table before they went home. And I can't remember who it was. She said, you want to learn today. And Kate turned around and used those same words against her, but they didn't show it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wait a minute, where is all this coming from? And she's talking about she's a selfish player. Major was never selfish in that game. If she cared about you, she protected you. Um, so that's why we were like, okay, Kate, okay, Kate, we caught you. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, that was it. Like, where's this coming from? And then for most of the time when Phaedra was on the circle of truth talking, Kate had turned around and was facing, gave uh, Phaedra her back and then turned around to acknowledge what she was saying. So to me, I felt like, oh, she already knows she's going to say, say that she's a traitor. But for you to be 100% sure, you must know. You got inside intel. That mm -hmm. means you're the traitor. So that's when I think Kate really messed up. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think she showed her cards in that moment. Is mm-hmm. um, because, like you said, you have to have some kind of intel if you are hundred percent sure that this person is who that you like. Like when Dan came for Phaedra, I'm like, oh yeah, he had to know, and it made sense for everybody to be like, okay, Phaedra, I see you. Because I was like, dang, as much as I hated it, because I, I was like rooting for Phaedra in this moment. I was like, she is so under the radar. Nobody really knows who she is, if that she is a traitor. Nobody was suspecting Phaedra. And I was like, dang, you just blew up a whole game running out. But I'm like, why, why? When well, Harvey was right there. Fair that although he blew up her spot, we were like, nah, not Phaedra. And right. for me, I was like, okay, well, if she is. We're gonna be best buds. <laughs> We're gonna be best buds. We said that I I don't know. I was some discourse on Twitter. Folks was going back and forth. Was like, does Sandra really know if Phaedra is a traitor or if Poverty is a traitor? Like, how does she? Because people are like she knows. She's just keeping them around so she can cut them at the end because that makes sense. And then people are like, nah, she don't know. She's just. She's just as clueless as everybody else. No, no, like, no the know. list the list for me changed um changed a lot because there was a point where I thought there was a point when Bergy comes down and he was like they tried to murder me but I had a shield and I was like he's a traitor because somebody <laughs> in a different franchise did that. Mm-hmm. They they had a shield and said I'm gonna murder myself because I can't be murdered, you know, to take the heat Sam. off. Of so anything I can't remember anything that they did that I was like, uh-uh. That's traitor behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not giving a straight answer. Blah, blah, blah. Traitor, traitor, traitor. So the list changes, but poverty was the first on my list um, because your list changes every day. And then I kept saying to myself, which I've said before, I was like, nah, I'm the better survivor place. So if they would have picked a traitor, it would have been me, not poverty. You know, like I'm just talking shit. And, and it ended up being her, but not because Alan picked her, but because Dan picked her. So. But yeah, so on my first list, I had Poverty was number one, followed by Peppermint, Marcus, and John from Parliament. Then I moved on to Sheree, Peter, and Berge. Um, and, and I you, you just move on. You just if anybody does anything suspect, like if they sneeze wrong, look, I drank a cup of water and Janelle claimed that I was a traitor. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it was just that kind of it was funny, it was nonsense. Mm-hmm. Look, you talked about that. That's funny you bring that up because we were just that was my next question. Because I want to talk about the fight that you and Janelle had at the round table. Let's that just seems so crazy. So when I came home, I told my husband and my kids, Oh my god, I had a big fight with Janelle at the round table. And they're like, What happened? I was like, All I remember is fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck <laughs> off, fuck off, right? Then it plays on TV and I hear a bitch. I swear I never heard that because I'm sure I would have come back with something similar. All I remember was like, and I get what she's saying. She was saying that all the traders were in the house, which at that point it were all the traders were in the house, but she grouped me in with those traders and she grouped in CT. Um, and that was her mistake. She should have limited the numbers of people she was throwing out there, you know, because maybe mm-hmm. I always go to the round table with a open mind. And if I see the votes are going a specific way, I want to be with the majority. So I'm going to vote with the herd. I don't care what anybody says. Um, my daughter's calling me. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, but yeah, so I didn't remember that, but I could see what she was doing. She, you know, she's explosive when she, what's ever on her mind, she's going to tell you. And um, she gives all these games uh, all her attention and she like she really goes in there and she was there to find a trader. But that wasn't my strategy. My strategy was, OK, we get a trader. Great. If not, I'm going to be friends with all the faithfuls and all the traders. And I think people are going to adapt my kind of strategy because you don't want to go home chasing a trader. Mm hmm. Um, well, I do have a question uh, specifically about Peppermint. Um, so we cover basically every drag race show, all, all things drag. We have a channel that covers that. So all of us were very excited to see Peppermint in this cast. And I'll be honest, um, I've seen eight different seasons of The Traders. Seeing Peppermint go first was one of the most heartbreaking eliminations. Um, so I just wanted to know your overall thoughts on Peppermint and what it was like playing with her and whether or not she could do better on a different season. 
I think she should get a second opportunity, just like Bananas, too. Like, we didn't really get to see his gameplay. Um, so Peppermint, Peter, Sheree, and I spent the first three days together in the car because the first episode takes three days to film because the location of the mission is so far away. Um, so we really got to know each other. And we I think everyone that came in in those cars together started off with these tight bonds. If you could figure out who was in what car, that's, that was their crew. So our alliance was called THC because they would park us in front of a church called the Highland Council Church. So we took those letters because we were looking for an alliance thing because Peppermint's like, we need an alliance thing. Like Peppermint knows all reality shows, including Survivor. And we, we, we need an alliance name. And we're like, okay, it's going to come to us. It's going to come to us. And there we are constantly being parked in front of the church. And I see THC and I'm like, that's it. That's our name, the Highland Council. And we rolled with it, right? So when the day happened that Peppermint got banished, uh, you know, her name was all over the castle. People were trying to talk to her and corner her. And I was like, Peppermint? Peppermint, you got to fix this or you're going to be the first one going home. I didn't want to vote for her. Sheree didn't want to vote for her. Peter didn't want to vote for her. But the rest of the house did. Um, and then I remember we were in the bar area and she walked in. I was like, girl, you got to fix this. And she walked right out. And I think her going into the kitchen and then saying by mistake, I'm a traitor. I mean, I mean, I'm a faithful like she says, she wishes that she would have took a step back and talked a little bit less because the more she talked, the more issues she started having. Um, but they're like that in the castle. When they zero, like on Survivor, when you zero in on one person, that's it. They just want it not to be them and it to be this one person. Um, so that's what happened with Peppermint. But I, I would love for Peppermint to get another shot. I really think she deserves it. Man, she had five large suitcases worth of wardrobe mm -hmm. she wanted to wear. She spent money buying the materials and designing her outfit. So I would like to see all of that wardrobe Pepper never, Peppermint never got to wear. I want her to wear it on the show. I would love to see that. Okay, now I think we almost run out of time with you, but I do have one one last question. That I'm going to ask David to ask the last question, but... um. I want to know if there was an All Stars Traders. Oh, they better freaking call oh, me. They would. They, we, we, I we, we, I've done enough that I deserve my damn spot. Absolutely. Me and David was like, that's okay. not even the question here. <laughs> that's not the question because we said well, there's an All Stars three trader, uh, traders. Sandra's coming. Yes, absolutely. But yeah. what three people would you like to see come with you on an All Star season? It don't have to be just from this season. It could be last season or whatever. But oh no, it would have to be from this season. My top people would have to be like, at the end, my writer dies. At the end, that really had my back were Sheree and Phaedra. Sheree and Phaedra. And, and if one more, I think MJ did an awesome job because she would clock the traders from the jump. But our issue was always with MJ that she was flip floppy. Especially when all we needed were the numbers. She always thought outside the box and was really there to catch the traders. And sometimes we'd be like, listen, we just need to vote this one way. We don't need these rogue votes, you know, but something just that simple. She, she wouldn't, you know? Um, so it, it's funny because at the pool table too, when we, when, when I did the balls, I was like, hopefully we have the more majority of the traders on our side. If they even have one trader over there, our traders over here need to not allow this trader to get their way because then this trader will go to the end and these traders have just lost. Like I was like putting it out there, like to everyone and poverty was standing there. Phaedra was standing there. I wasn't talking to them, but I was like, our traders hopefully are on our side. You know what I'm saying? Like don't allow this to happen because then we're all screwed. Ain't nobody getting to the end. And then I always said to at the bottom, I was like, we can't allow MJ to talk too much to them over there because she might, you know, MJ was the one that she listened to everyone, which is awesome. She gave everyone the benefit of the doubt. She always had an open door policy and she really made moves on her own. Like she didn't care what anybody else was doing. And that's the thing with the round table. You might have the majority, but you're always going to get these rogue votes from these rogue players 
that are not playing necessarily strategically or the way you would play a specific situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for, for the final question, I'm going to try to squeeze in two questions, it won't, right. but they're going to be really quick. Um, so in the reunion, you said uh, going into this game out of 600 survivors, poverty is the last one you would, would have wanted to play with. Uh, what about Russell Hans? <laughs> I don't think they would invite him. So like he wasn't yeah. even a thought. That's fair. Um, That's the true. other, the other question was about Nina. Um, so we, we cover Australian survivor. Um, how do you think Nina would do on a season of the traders? Oh, I think she'd do good because my daughter, she has the whole package, everything I don't have. She has it, the brains, the brawn, the strategy. Um, yeah, she's a social butterfly, just like mm -hmm. I am. Um, so I think my daughter would do great. Oh, I enjoyed her so much on Australian mm -hmm. Survivor. I was like, oh, not me falling in love with another uh, twine. Like, yeah, so I wish an American Survivor would give her a shot. Mm -hmm. They really do. They really. I, I said that the first time. I was like, why has she not been on American Survivor? Like, yeah, because they're gonna think, oh, she's only there because she's Sandra's son's yeah. daughter. But listen, my daughter has paid her dues. I'm about to say, a play. Absolutely. And if Let you, her know, in. you better watch Australian Survivor. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I say, on Paramount Plus. I'm about to say, they need to let her in because then they'll realize very quickly not only is she Sandra's daughter, but she got everything that Sandra has and more. Exactly. Like, it's some things that she did as Australian Survivor. I was like, oh, Sandra would have never done that. But yeah, she my daughter was out there winning damn immunity. <laughs> winning <laughs> jumps. Okay. My daughter don't play. She took out the biggest dude in that damn tribe. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I loved her. But, mm -hmm. but I think we're going to let you go because we appreciate you so much yes. for stopping by and talking. This no problem. Pleasure. Anytime. David knows how to reach me. Lana, it was a pleasure meeting you. Um, I hope I cleared some stuff up. I'm going to go finish packing my little suitcase. I'm not taking as much as I took to the reunion because at the <laughs> reunion we had to pack the dress, the jewelry, the shoes, everything. But this time I'm packing light. But you guys take care, okay? And Thank thanks you. for the love. Of course, always and anytime. But that's it, y'all. We're going to say goodbye. And um, we appreciate y'all for watching. And hit the subscribe button while you're here. You know, do all those things. And um, get your cup mug. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you're not up. Bye. Bye, everybody.